Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here and welcome to Mornings with 60 and Me. Today is a Monday, it's August the 22nd. So welcome to a brand new week. I hope that you're having a great morning and it's really wonderful to have you all here with me. I appreciate you taking the time to join us. If you do, by the way, want to uh, get these news broadcasts first, just go up to 60andme.com forward slash mornings and sign up there and um, you'll be told as soon as the news is released. And I'm just so thankful, by the way, for all of the comments that you leave um, during the show. This is your time. It's your opportunity to get to know each other. Uh, perhaps you want to just say where you're, where you're living, you know, what you're up to this week and um, just get to know a bit about our community which is just an amazing group of women all around the world. So I'd like to first of all I'm drinking my cup of tea this morning I have my favorite green tea and I was just thinking this morning I maybe need some new suggestions for tea I have my favorites like everyone so if you've got some ideas of tea that I might want to try just leave it in the comment section below and now I'll, um, I'll try your tea. And uh, so let's go through a few things that are going on in the world and um, share what's, uh, what's important. It's been a, a busy few days. Well, first of all, last night in Rio de Janeiro, the Olympics came to a spectacular, shimmering, colorful end um, in Macarena st uh, Stadium. And they just did a great job of um, bringing to a close what has been a remarkable Olympics game. They handed over to Tokyo, who is going to be sponsoring the games in 2020. And and um, I think it was um, the, the gentleman heading up the Olympic Committee for Japan, dressed up as Mario, the Mario Brothers character, you know, the true Japanese uh, cartoon character. And it was just a, a wonderful, um, positive handover. So a couple of things did happen, though, in the last day of the Olympics, which I have to mention because they're so special. The first thing that happened um, was that Brazil, the hometown, beat Germany for the football gold medal. And this has just had everybody in absolute, um, you know, enthralled with uh, the, that victory. For one reason, they lost in a kind of humiliating uh, game in the World Series, World Cup Series, a couple of years ago. Um, Germany beat Brazil, which was not a good thing because the national sport in Brazil is football. So they're absolutely, you know, big fans. So they won. They beat Germany and uh, they won the gold medal. And that's uh, fantastic. Also, um, there was a, another um, important thing about the, the gold medals. The US team came out ahead. They won first prize with 116 medals at this game and 43 were gold. And in Great Britain came second with gold medals and uh, China very close third. I think it was 27 and 26. So they all did really, really great. And congratulations to all the players, all the teams and the athletes who give, gave it their best. Um, CNN did a really nice interview with a lot of the people who had won medals, not just gold. Asked them what their advice was for people wanting to get to the Olympics. And the number one comment was just believe in yourself. You know, just believe in yourself, practice hard, you know, have discipline. But the most important thing was to believe in what you could do. So that was kind of cool. So the Olympics are done for this year. We'll move on to other other news. And of course, the news um, then starts to get a little bit strange because it's not this is not a predictable world anymore. Um, a couple of things in the Philippines, uh, the UN has uh, well given a warning to the president of, of Philippines, Rodrigo Duter Duterte, to cut back on the very um, aggressive policy he has on drug abuse and uh, drug use in Philippines. There have been about, I think, 900 police killings of drug dealers, something, say, users, uh, and, you know, people who, who many, you know, didn't feel deserved to be, to be killed. If they had any association with drug use or drug selling, they were, they were shot. And the president has been very vocal about that being okay, that he is very um, uh, comfortable with even vigilante groups taking action against drug users and drug, um, drug, drug dealers, I think, is his primary audience. But he said yesterday, you know, if the UN doesn't like it, well, then we'll just leave the UN or consider leaving the UN. And his attitude is very, um, in a way, scary because it's very dramatic and forceful. But and that's the life in the Philippines. And there was there's some articles today online about um, the prison system in the Philippines and how really um, horrific it is. So that's happening in the Philippines. 
In Yemen, another place in the world where there's a lot of difficulty, the, uh, over the weekend, hundreds of thousands of people showed up in a rally um, to support the Houthi um, uh, rebels. Now, they call them the Houthi insurgents. They are a group of, of fighters who support the previous president. Um, he lost the last election, and um, they've actually fought back against the president, uh, who is, is a current president, um, his Mansour Hadi. And he has actually been forced out of the country because they were so forceful in resisting his new presidency. Now, the complication is that this new president is supported by Saudi Arabia and a coalition of other countries, including United States. So Saudi Arabia is supporting the present prime uh, president who has been, you know, he's left the country and the Houthi rebels are fighting against that. So it's a little bit tricky. The American um, military has just announced they're pulling back on advisors in Yemen, trying to, you know, sensing the difficulty uh, there between these two groups. And it's, it's an important um, country for lots of reasons. That part of the Middle East is, is very, very um, explosive. So just an update on Yemen. Just so you might find that interesting to have the background um, on that. So in Turkey, uh, as I reported yesterday, there was a horrific bombing at a wedding, uh, at the celebrations after the wedding. The bride and groom survived the bombing, but over 50 people were killed. And now it turns out that from the, what the president Erdogan of Turkey says is that it was almost certainly an ISIS attack and that, in his opinion, they, they have evidence that a young young person committed this crime. Someone maybe 12, 13 years old was the suicide bomber. So that's really sad to hear on lots of levels, but that's what's coming out of Turkey, and I'll give you an update tomorrow. I'm sure this will be an ongoing story. I have a now switch gears a bit. I'd like to talk to you about something that may be on your mind and is certainly an issue for a lot of boomers these days. I read an article by a woman called Rebecca Barsh, and she, it's a, uh, the article was in Forbes magazine, which is a very re reputable magazine. And her topic was, should boomers help their adult children financially? This is a really interesting topic. And if you're thinking of doing this, or if you are doing this, the first thing she says is you're not alone. Uh, there's about a third of baby boomers who are providing financial help to their adult children. And she doesn't make a value judgment on this, just asks that people look at, um, ask three questions of themselves when they're making this decision. The first thing is, can you afford it? Can you really afford it? Um, she says anything you know that involves your own financial stability, if lending money to your uh, children is going to affect your own financial stability, just think very carefully about that. Your financial um, situation and security is just as important as your child's. The second thing is to ask yourself whether you're enabling or empowering. Now, if your child, for example, has got a situation, a medical problem or some, some other kind of real issue that, that where your help is needed, then it, she, in her opinion, is, is, is probably fine to go ahead and help. But perhaps it's better with others who are just running through a tough time to give, um, give a, a credit, um, you know, like a, instead of giving them money, pay a bill or give them something that's a credit like you know for food and also suggests that maybe even considering paying for a financial advisor for them to to go to and talk about their situation the final question that she asks that people consider is um, are you really setting clear expectations about what you're what you're lending or what you're giving you know is it a gift or is it a loan this is an important question and how and what is the payback schedule have you got you know, something in mind for what happens if they don't pay back? You know, what's going to happen? So in other words, she's just basically saying, if you're going to give money to your adult children, give it either as a gift or a loan, but make it clear what it is, and then be really thoughtful about how you're going to, how that person is going to repay. So I guess that's, you know, that's a really interesting article. I'd love your feedback on that. You don't have to go into too much personal detail. I know these things are, are quite sensitive, but if you've got this situation, it would be interesting to know how you're managing it. Okay, finally, this is a story I found that hopefully will make you full of great memories. Um, an article by a gentleman called Alan, um, Alan Paul, who wrote a, put together a list of 
of music memories. These are songs that he said kind of define our generation. And I have to be honest, I was raised in Detroit, Michigan, so as, a, as a teenager. So I love Motown. And you know all the songs that I, I mean, I basically know the words to, you know, Ain't No Mountain High Enough and, you know, all the Supreme songs. And my favorite, of course, is Gladys Knight and the Pips. It's A, a Midnight Train to Georgia. Love that song. So that's my kind of my memory of, of uh, my generation's music. But he gives some ideas and I thought I'd just read his top sort of seven or eight and you can, then we can maybe a little chat, have a vote. So he's, these are in no particular order, by the way. These are just his ideas. Satisfaction, Rolling Stones. Like a Rolling Stone, built Bob Dylan. Let It Be by the Beatles. Uh, Stairway to Heaven, Led Zeppelin. Imagine, John Lennon, Hotel California by the Eagles, and then Born to Run by Bruce Springsteen. Those are the top seven or, or seven that he mentioned. He mentioned like 50 in this article. So go check out the article. We'll leave a link. But I'd love to know, what was your favorite song of our generation? I'll come back to that in a second. I just want to finish with a couple of more things, and then I'll remind you of our question of the day. So next thing, bracelet. Yesterday, I showed you this really pretty little bracelet that I, I purchased in Italy. And the, the person I chose to have this on her wrist is someone called Tannis Day. Tannis, you're in Kitchener, Ontario, in Canada. And I just think that you'll love this. So congratulations, Tannis. I'll be in touch with you to get your details so I can send this to you. And uh, thanks to everyone who left such beautiful comments and messages. And, you know, honestly, it means the world to me. And I really, really thank you. But um, Tannis is going to take this little brace at home. And the other thing I wanted to mention is um, that you, I asked you yesterday about favorite quotes. And uh, you gave me some really lovely quotes. So for the next few days, I'm just going to finish um, our little Mornings with 60 and Me with a quote, something to think about. This one's from Judy, and she's left this really lovely, lovely quote for, by Angel, and, um, um, Maya, Angelou, Maya Angelou, and it is, I'll read it. We delight in the beauty of the butterfly, but rarely admit the changes it has gone through to achieve that beauty. That's Maya Angelou. She was such a wise woman. But I often think that myself, you know, we, we worry about making changes and taking risks, but that's how you that's how you become the beautiful person. So thank you again for being here today. Uh, happy Monday. I uh, hope you have a great day. And I just want to leave you with my request for you, the question of the day. And that is, what is your favorite song of our generation? Look forward to hearing your answers and joining the conversation. Have a wonderful day, everyone. See you again tomorrow on Mornings with 60 and Me. Bye for now.